Hey guys, how are y'all today? I am back from Long Beach um, where it was lovely and rainy there, but it was better than the sub-zero degree temperatures that we have here. So say hi, say where you're from. Um, thanks for joining me today. I see Kelly, I see Joyce, I see Robin, and I see Sherry and Marsha. So um, can y'all hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Let me know. Be And also be sure and share and like this in your um be sure and share and like the channel. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. So good to see you, Charlene. And thanks for letting me know you can hear and see me. Good deal. Um, okay, guys, not a lot of questions came in today. Good to see you again, Sharon. Um, but there were two. One was from Norway and one from the, was from the U.S., I'm assuming. Not sure who I'd have to go back and look at my questions to see who sent them in. Somebody did send a question in, but they then they didn't respond to me in order for me to be able to truly answer their question. So I can't actually answer that one. Um, they wanted me to expand something. And until I actually visualize what it is they're wanting me to change in their design, I don't have a clue. I'm, I'm sitting there going, absolutely, mm, I have no clue. So good to see you, Robin and Susan and Sandra. Thanks for joining today. So the question came in, how do I create a single run and then a zigzag stitch to follow it? Okay. And I was like, I, I was thinking this would be just like a no brainer, copy, paste, change the entry exit point, be done. Now it's a little bit more complicated than that, but it's really not hard. So let me kind of give you an idea of how this can work. Oops, I do have to say share screen. It's soggy over there in Southern Texas. We were supposed to be soggy today too, but so far it has not been raining here. All right. So the question was how to create a straight line and have a, a zigzag stitch go over the top of it and have it run continuously. So if I, if you watch this, see how that runs and there's no jump stitch, that's what we want to create. So how did I do that? You would think it would be as simple as copy and pasting and changing the direction of it, but it's not. However, it is a copy paste thing. So if I come and I um, hold my shift key down to draw my straight line, double click, I have a running stitch line. Okay. I'm going to actually change that to a zigzag stitch. I could do it either way, but this way you'll get the concept a little bit faster, I think. And then I'm going to copy and paste that down and change that to a running stitch and change the color to black just so we can see it. So you can see that there's a jump stitch there. And if I put this in the front, let's watch it stitch. There would be a jump stitch. Even if it were the same color, there would be a jump stitch. And that's not what we want. But if we take this little running stitch here and select it, go to the home tab and go rotate flip and flip it vertically and then change our color to the same color. If you watch it stitch, it'll stitch perfectly up the running stitch will go up and then the zigzag will stitch will come down. Now that's assuming you do not have an, any under sewing on your zigzag stitch. Okay. So if we were going to do that and it was going to be for a horizontal line, let's play with that one. We'll draw our horizontal line and this time I'm not going to change the color. I'm not going to change the stitch type, but I will change the color. We'll put that in black and we'll copy it. Control C, Control V, and we'll change it to a zigzag stitch and we'll change the color of that second stitch so we can see what we need to do. But I want to see where that jump is. So you can see there's that jump stitch that's going across and back. So I think the same trick will work, except this time we would flip horizontally. Now you see that jump stitch disappears. Simply take that and move it back where it goes and change the color to yellow so that they match. So now if you watch it stitch, it stitches the way you want it to go. Um, and as long as, as long as there's no jump stitch there, it will not jump. Now, if you truly wanted to make sure there's no trim, it's a little bit more challenging. You would have to come in here and grab your run punch tool. Hold your shift key down. Oh, actually that won't work on this with this tool. 
So you have to kind of, we can snap to grid. So let me go and go to our view tab and let's show grid and we'll choose snap to grid. So then I can come and draw a line and we won't double click, but we will switch to our manual punch tool and change it to a straight. And then you can go over and double click. Oops, I guess I need to needed to adjust that a little bit. Needed one more click. What did I do wrong there? Let's try that again. One click, click, change it to a straight, go up, down, we'll go back up. There we go. And then double click. So now you've got your straight line. So if you needed that skinnier, You'd need to select your points. Let's turn off snap to grid now. Grab those three points at the top and you can use your arrow key to move them down. And then you could grab the three points at the bottom and move your use your up arrow key to squeeze them in. Then if you watch that one stitch, it should stitch continuously. but it does more than one run. Oh, I know why it did more than one one run. Let's look and see. There is under sewing on it. So now let's watch it. There you go. And that gives you your single run and your zigzag stitch over the top of it. So either one of those will work. Um, Thanks, Sharon. It was a it was a rocky road yesterday in the air, but it actually no travel delays, so it was kind of a good day. Um, yeah, uh, well, I hate that we didn't get to see you. It was quite an interesting show, guys. Um, it's a commercial apparel decorator show, so it's the impression show, and it's commercial apparel decorating. And so all of the shirt manufacturers were there. All of the big commercial industry machines were there. All we were doing was multi-needles in that spot, but it was quite interesting, I'll have to say. Um, I was amazed by how many booths there were and how much stuff there was to decorate um, and how many different techniques that there are out there these days. So it, it really was very interesting, and it was interesting to talk to that different crew than what we're used to. The, you know, the other interesting thing is we're used to taking an order right there and being done with and letting you guys go home with a machine. And that's not the way it works this time. We basically gave you the 800 number to call with the dealer that we were working with. And then they would take the order over the phone. So that was a little weird. It, it was a different kind of day. How do the sewing attributes correspond with BE design, PE design? Okay. So the difference is in BES, the lower the number, the higher the density. In PE design, it's the reverse. The higher the number, the higher the density. So that that in the same thing with blue. So let me kind of let me kind of show you here. Um, it's not that different, Kelly. She just she had a specific need and wanted it to do that way. But a center run, it, it doesn't actually do a center run. I guess I could let me show that before I move on. So if I had, let's say I did a running stitch, a, a zigzag stitch, and I put under sewing on it, depending on the width of it. So let me, let's change the color to something y'all can see. And let's zoom in on it so you can see what would happen with this one. So depending on the width depends on how many layers of run you get underneath it. So you don't get to pick one or two. So I've got under sewing on that one. That gives a quite a bit different. Now, if I didn't have under sewing on that and I changed my entry and exit point, that might be another way we could have done this. I changed my entry and exit to that. It might have done what we that actually that works as well. Just change the entry and exit point without under sewing. So that's another way we could do it. So thanks for asking that question. It made me think of another way to do something. You never can tell what I'll come up with. Okay, so in PE design, let's just draw us a little circle here. 
and I guess we need a regular fill stitch. I was playing with decorative fills. The density right here is 4.5 lines per millimeter. So increasing that increases the number of lines per millimeter, which means it's going to compact those stitches together. You're going to get more stitches in, a in that area. And in BES blue, if I did add a design, let me just get, grab this. And let's say we wanted to look at this density here. So if I'm looking at the density on um, the red portion of this, where is my density over here? 0.4 is the default. So let um, think of that as like 4.0. But if I go down, if I go up to 0.6, you're going to notice that it's way less dense. If I go down, to point 0.3, it's going to be more dense. So what it's doing is it's spreading out the lines. Um, so you just kind of have to think of them backwards, okay? That's kind of a, a weird thing, but it kind of has to, um, you just have to think of them backwards. And I know that doesn't, it, that's the way a lot of programs work. They work with, if you go down in number, it increases the density. P design just happens to be opposite from the rest of them. And so once you learn which one's going to do which, it, it will stick with your brain. You just have to remember flip-flop. Okay. Um, other questions? No. Okay. So the next question that came in was about turning off jump stitches on a um, XE1. Okay. Now I don't have an XE. I have, um, I have a luminaire, but it's going to be the same thing. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm not going to demonstrate it live because last week we had problems with that. So this was an easier way for me to do it. In your embroidery screen, you want to touch embroidery and then that takes you to layout the layout screen. In the layout screen down here at the bottom, you'll see this little trim key. That is where you'll find your trim functions. Now, let me find the next photo. When you get in there to make sure that no trims happen whatsoever, you can set, turn off the end color trim and turn off the jump stitch trim. Once you turn those off, they will not be blue and then touch OK. Once you do that, your machine should not trim at any point. OK, and that works on pretty much mo the majority of the machines. OK. Um, so that, I mean, that's really an easy way to do it. Okay. Um, all right, Molly Ann, it was your question. I couldn't remember. Uh, <laughs> so could, couldn't remember what you were, who it was that asked the question, but knew that um, you needed some, that somebody had asked it. So I did it. And that should take care of the, but yours still does. That is uh, really odd. And you've turned off both things. It should not be doing that. So um, do you, hopefully you have a dealer nearby. If not, I'll get an edu another educator to check and see what happens on theirs. One that does have a Stellaire um, and see what happens because I personally don't have one to be able to check to see why it's not turning off for you. It should turn off the trim and it should not be design dependent. Okay. And the design doesn't have a tie off. Okay. And if, if you turn off the trims, it will not tie off. Okay. It, it does not do it. It does not do the tie off at the end. In the beginning, you'll have to fast forward through a few, but it will not do the tie offs at the end. Okay. I, so I'm not sure what's going on with yours that it's not but that's what should make it tr not trim. And if I turn mine off, it does not trim. So it may, it's an XE issue and I'll have to see what's going on with others. If you could send me a design, it might allow me to do a little, um, or tell me which design you're using on the machine that you're still having an issue with. And it might allow me to troubleshoot a little bit better with somebody else. Okay. Um, other questions, guys. Mm -hmm. 
I don't see any. Come on, y'all got to have more for me today. This is only 15 minutes into our live. You're going to make me come up with something. Um, <laughs> send it to the email address that I sent you, okay? And if I didn't send you one, let me know. I'll, it's Cindy Hogan at Cynthia's Embroidery.com. C-I-N-D-Y. Um, so if I didn't, if I did not send you that, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you one, a message when we're done. Um, okay. Well, let's see, what can we play with? So come on, somebody think of something. If not, I'm going to have to sit here and think of what we can play with that we haven't played with lately. Um, hmm. How about a word collage? Deck fills. Uh, what's just a thought, Kelly? Yes, I can go over hold sewing and set and remove overlap again. That'll be that's an easy one. I can do that. And, but I will, um, Kelly, guess you can do your own coll word collages if you have, I believe it's Power Pack 1. You'd have to go back in that list, in that thing that I did. So let me go and um, let's first do remove overlap and set whole sewing. Okay. So the, the difference between remove over, and we're back in P Design 11. Okay. Let me change this back to the default so y'all can see. And let's zoom out. So if I have a circle and I copy that circle and I paste it and I put it inside of the other one. So let's change our colors so we can actually see what's happening. So we'll do two greens inside of a purple and a pink. Okay. If I select all and go into modify overlap and set whole sewing. What it does is it completely removes what's behind there. So if I, I, if I, oops, it's now one unit, so I can't just hide it. But if I zoom in, you'll notice that it is one unit. There is no longer any purple stitches in there. If I undo that, you'll see the purple stitches there. When I redo it, those are totally removed. It is one complete unit. Now, if I don't want those center stitches to stitch, if I were trying to just get myself a little donut, I could go and select that part and go to my shapes and turn off that fill stitch. So now I've got a hole in the center and I could change that outline of the center to match pink. And I, now I've got myself a little donut. Okay. Now, if I, let's see undo and undo. The deal with that is they have to be completely contained within one another. By that, I mean a part of it cannot be cannot be outside of it. So if I tried to set whole sewing this in this manner, and this is not one I would do that, but if I tried to set whole sewing here, it would say invalid pair because these are not truly overlapping. Okay. And if you get invalid pair, with another shape, that means even though it's filled, that means it's crisscrossed. But what I can do with this is I can remove the overlap. So it's, they're overlapping. Oh, wait a minute. I set whole sewing again, didn't I? They're overlapping, but I can remove that overlap. Now, but what happens with that one is you're going to have two, two, um, outlines going. So how, what can I do to get work around that? Here's your workaround. If you copy and paste the original shape, control C, control V. Now I've got the original shape twice. Okay. The first one, I'm going to leave the, the fill stitch on and turn off the outline. The second one, I'm going to turn off the fill stitch and leave the outline. And then I'm going to go select it and select point, right mouse click, split at point, 
right mouse click on the opposite side split it point Click the plus sign here, select that piece that I want to get gone, select it, press delete on my keyboard. Now, if I move this away, you'll notice I ha don't have an outline there, but I still have my fill. So that gives you that capability of manipulating that. And that's the difference between the two. So when do I use each? Okay. If I don't want to mess with, if it's completely con contained, I will use set hole sewing without a doubt because it's, you know, one and done. You don't have to mess with it. If, however, I am trying to have things overlapping and moving, then I will do the remove overlaps and I will take the extra time to copy paste and move things around and remove that portion of it. Okay. Um, Now, Kelly, you can't insert images instead of words unless they were alpha mapped, as it, unless your images were somehow alpha mapped. You could do that, but you can't do images. What I end up doing is just um, tossing, the, adding my images in. Uh, stained glass, let's do that another day. I think. We'll see. Okay, so reset the connection again. Um, usually, it makes sure that your computer is on your 2.4 gigahertz side of your router. That is the biggest thing. Same thing with the luminaire itself. Then when you add, it should add it back in and it should be able to transfer back and forth. That would be the only thing I can tell you that I wouldn't, that wouldn't, the only reason it wouldn't work. Um, yes, when it came out, Joyce, I did quite a bit on that one. Um, we did actually even did a um, educator challenge on the Brother So's channel. So that was probably two years ago when we came out with that one. Um, go back and check out some of my ones for that. Um, but if you, there's specific questions that you have about that one, I'll be happy to show you. I can bring it up um, and help you with that one. Um, I'm, Linda, I don't know what you're asking here. Oh. You, I hold sewing remove overlay. Put luck that I want to applique with nothing under it. Um, it only works, the remove overlaps and set hole sewing only work with things that have been created in the software itself. And so I'm not sure how your quilt block would not be underneath there. So I'm not real sure what you're asking me. Um, I, that one's not clear. At, that one's truly not clear for me. I have a quilt block that I want to put a P in. Is the quilt block in stitches or is it running stitches? Your quilt block won't go together if you don't have the stitches there for it to complete. Um, um, I'm truly not. It doesn't work on running stitches. It has to be a fill stitch and it has to be something that was created in PE design. So if you don't, if it's something that's already stitched, I mean, it's something from someplace else instead of, um, and I'm going to kind of have to foe this, okay? Um, <clears throat> let me find quilt designs. So let's say this was your design, all right? And you had a design you wanted to put on top of it. And you don't want those stitches underneath it. Yeah, the running stitches are not going to go away. That is, uh, that's just the way of life. Um, it, they're truly not going to go away. And your block wouldn't go together if they're running stitches. Um, well, that's a terrible design to try to do this with. Too tiny. Let me find something a little bit better. Oh, 
Okay, so let's say I wanted to get rid of the stitches underneath here. I can go to my stitches tab and I can choose my split stitches tool and then that shadow underneath there allows me to snip around what's underneath it. I don't want to get rid of, wait a minute. I'm trying, I need to select the correct piece. I want to get rid of the quilting underneath it. So now that shadow there lets me snip around what I'm trying to get rid of. And if I want to get rid of these stitches right here, I've got to get right along them. The challenge is, if, if it's your quilt block, then you're not going to have quilt stitches there. When I double click, now I can take that little chunk, select it, and it's automatically selected and de deleted. So now those stitches are not going underneath the rest of the stitches. Um, if there are a couple of stray stitches left, you can always go to your select, select the item in your sewing order window and go to your select point tool. So like I could get rid of these two, these stitches right here if I were trying to. And those I could highlight and get rid of. But I'd want that one to come down. So that does get rid of them. They're out from underneath it, but be careful, okay? You're welcome. It's just not a remove overlap thing, okay? Yes, I can color I can color separate <clears throat> designs. All right, let me go up and do um, I believe before I answer that next question, I will go over um, knockdown stitch. Okay, so let's say we're putting a name on something and it could be a design as well. But for today, we're going to say it's a, it's text. What hoop size have I got selected? Let's go down to a four by four. And let me turn off my grid. There we go. So now I'm going to put that in the middle and I'm going to go home and I'm going to choose the embroidered patch wizard. And you want to choose how far away you want your knockdown stitch to extend past your actual text. So let's say I want 1.5 and click OK. So you'll notice how it creates that shape around it. Now come in and grab that. Hit the select tool right here. Or double click it. Change it from not sewn to a net fill stitch. Go to the sewing attributes and choose the third option and then make it more dense by decreasing your spacing between the stitches this time. Then take that and move it to sew first. And I generally sew it the same color as whatever is, um, what am I trying to say? Whatever the color of my blank is. Okay. So that's what I would that's what how I would do a knockdown stitch. So this the same color as the blank that you're doing. Um, okay, so Beverly, that is um, what we call word collage. And we can do that in BES very easily, but not so much in it, it's not easy in P design. You have to manually do it in P design. Okay. So I'll kind of show you that here in just a second. Um, well, Joyce, nobody ever asked me a question on it. So I haven't, when I get a question on something, I'll do, I'll actually do something with it. But if there's no questions on it, then I'm assuming nobody wants to hear about it. So if somebody is having, if somebody has questions about it, then I'll be happy to, to do it. Um, so no, that's not true. Only in, the, in um, with net fill stitches, yes, BES uses spacing, or excuse me, P Design uses spacing. With a regular fill stitch, 
we use density. Okay. So um, here it is density. So it all depends on what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, that, that question comes up probably every month. Um, how to do knockdown stitches and people don't want to go back and find it. And I don't remember which episode it was. I'd have to go play around with it and figure it out. Um, let me see here. The travel stitch between objects. How do you do that without stops and trims? Well, in P design, if if the jump oops if the jump stitch is less than less than excuse me in a in a domestic machine, if the jump is less than five millimeters, the machine should not trim. So if you want to make that happen, then you have things spaced that far apart. So let's say, let me, I can't find my little digit there. There we go. Let's say we have two shapes. And you don't want it to trim between those two shapes. You wanted a running stitch. You go in, you go to the home tab, you come in and you grab your line drawing tool. Uh, first thing I do is figure out where they're going to start and stop before I do my line drawing tool. So they're going to start and stop down here at the bottom. Therefore, when I come and grab my shape tool, I'm going to change it to a running stitch and left click from here and double click here. Then move that in between the two. Then if you, let's get out of yellow because I can't see yellow. Let's change that to something darker. There we go. So now, if I come in here and I finesse this a little bit, I can grab my select tool and my select point tool, make it to where they're going to get right on top of each other. And there's no longer a five millimeter jump, therefore it should not trim. Okay, that's technically how they work. Um, no, Linda, we don't have that really, that capability. Okay. Um, I don't think, let me, let me, let's do the word collage part first and then I'll go to that. So BES word collage. If I go to my tools tab and I hit my word collage button, oh, wait a minute. There's something else somebody asked in BES before I hit this, but that's okay. Oh, bring in, oh, they wanted to bring in items and there's really no way to do that. So if I come in here and I grab a shape, let's say we wanted to do, they're in alphabetical order, by the way. Oh, I don't want to do the tie. I'm going to do a heart today. The first thing you want to do is make it the size you want it to be. The bigger the size the more chance you have to get more words in it. So I want it to fit in my 200, my um, eight by eight inch hoop. That's 200 by 200. If I wanted it to fit in the two, 10 by 10, I think that's 300 by 300. It may be four, but we'll go with 800 by 800. Now you enter your words. You need a comma in between every word. All right. You can do, if you have the base level, you can do it as stitches. If you have power pack two, you can do it in artwork mode instead. Um, you can choose to use your favorite fonts or you can, you can choose all fonts and you can pick from any of the fonts that pull out. Um, Drake usually works. Drake and Daily usually work very well to get started. Granny O works very well to get started. And then I'll play with those. And then you say generate. So the first time that you do it, I always let you, I always do it this way first to see what you can do. And it's going to throw them in any direction. This is not my favorite method but I'll give it to you first. All right. So see how it throws those in any direction. 
I like it a little bit more linear. So I'll choose horizontal, vertical, and di diagonal so it doesn't put my words in upside down. Depending on how long your words are will depend on what you get. You may get more of a more more of one word than another. And I just keep generating till I see something that I like. You will never get the same thing twice. So when you find one that you like that you can work with, go for it. I kind of like that one. We'll say, OK, now what do I do from here? Well, I've got a few words and I'm really not. I don't want all of those words. So I'm going to take out this word right here. And I'm going to go into my home tab and I'm going to get choose add design and I will come in here and I look in my accents and I look in my monogram fills and I'll throw in a heart. And then I can take that heart and move it where I want it to go. I can shrink it in. I could rotate it and plop it where I want it to go. Um, if I only want the heart and I don't want the little swirly do, I can come down here on the left hand side in my sequence view window and expand the part that's the swirly do, select it and press delete on my keyboard. Now I just have a heart. I can come in and add another design. Mm, what do we got? There's a heart. That one's a bigger one, so maybe we pop it right here and take out that love. Oops. And let's move that out of the way. And then you, I mean, if there's other things that you want to put in there, you can certainly put them in there, but that's, that tends to be how I do it. Now, if you wanted to kind of scatter shapes, Kelly, um, you could come in. <laughs> what do you think? All right. So let's say we put that one in there. Let me see if I can do multiples. So now if I grab both of those and I go to my tools tab, I believe it is arrange and scatter. And let's see here, apply. Yeah. Oh, let's change spacing between them. Me, hold on. I must have them too far apart. So you can get it to kind of randomly scatter your designs around and see if there's something that you like and then take those say, okay, Give it a second <clears throat> and then copy them. Come back over here, select and paste. I've never done it this way, but then you could plop and drop and see what you could do, but you can't, I mean, it gives you an idea how you might arrange them. So I don't know. I don't know if I do that or not. If I did it, I think I would turn off color sort. So let's undo that and let's turn off color sort. Oh, wait a minute. Let's reduce that. So yeah, turn off color sort and then click OK. And then when you try to go group them, it would work. <clears throat> so now I can ungroup. And before I do anything, I would regroup these parts back together. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll fall apart.
Control key lets you grab them. Group. Oh, uh, Control G lets you group them. I thought I turned off color. Oh, I forgot to click apply. Darn it. <laughs> so it color sorted. You you do have to click apply. So it, it's still color sorted on me. I didn't pay attention. I didn't hit the apply button is a very, very important part when you don't want something to group or to color sort in those sub menus. So now you could go in and play with them and pop them some places. Okay. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that because Lord knows we could spend all day playing with that one. Okay. Um, I agree. Easier to do them sim uh, separately. Um, could I copy the built-in fonts into BES and paste them in? Nope. You cannot. They are in a two totally different um they are in a totally different format so they are not interchangeable so you cannot do that you could save each letter individually and take them in there but you can't do it the other way okay uh <laughs> okay i'm sorry i've, I've I'm, I'm lost on that one okay can you color separate a purchase design so it can be turned into an application? That's the next one. Color sort, color separate a design so it can be turned into an application. All right. And somebody wanted to know, could we do an applique around a design? And let me do, let me answer this question first. So, and I'm pretty sure my answer is no, but okay. Caveat, if you have the artwork tools, you can go to your arrange tool and you can create an offset. And you can choose how far you want it offset. Give it a second. See if I haven't crashed and burned it. How many ripples did I choose? I thought I only chose one. I may be using up too much computing power. Let's see what Lenovo's got going on and close that window. Um, well, I crashed and burned my program. Let's, let's close it and let's see. Because I may have done something different. Hold on. All right. Try it one more time. Let's create an offset. Outer edge only, one ripper, ripple, and we want to leave the beginning design. Oh, it only gave me part of it. That did not work. So let's grab just that part and say offset. Hmm. It does not like that design I selected. So I'm going to say no. <laughs> Let's try a different design. It may just be too much for that one to handle. Um. Nope. I'm killing my program each and every time. So it does not like that. Um, there is technically a way you could do it, but you have to do it much more manually. Okay. 
So if I were doing it, if I were trying to make it work this way, since it's not liking me today the other way, you do have tools and you can draw around your item. So you could technically come in here and draw around this. My dog is snoring in here, y'all. This is so funny. She's not as loud as Jerry's pug. And then you would say close the shape and now right, right click. Then you can convert that to applique. So that would be how you would make a patch there. Not as, not as simple as in P design. So if I were making, let's go back to P design. So how do I make a patch out of a pre-digitized design? <clears throat> um, import window. We're going to act like we, we purchased this. Okay. We're not going to act. We're going to act like it's not something built in. <sighs> Trying to find something I've got. Okay. Zoom out. So let's say we want the sunflower, the, the leaf, this part, the yellow part of the sunflower to be an applique. The first thing you would do is stitches divide by color then you would grab your um, yellow select it and convert to outline convert whole to outline now that can be turned into an applique home applique wizard and you would oh wait cancel let me see here show let me show my items not stitch so we want to grab that, actually all of that. Applique wizard, it should have asked me if I want to create one with whole sewing, but it's not. And then you can replace that yellow. I don't like that. Oh, undo. I know why I don't like that. Let me hide this and this so I can see what's going on there. Oh, that we don't need. That we don't need. Okay, now let's try it. Select applique wizard zigzag stitch. Let's take it a little bit down to 2.5, replace it and say, okay. And there is your applique. Now you can turn the other stitches back on and that's how you do it. Okay. So divide by stitches, convert to applique. Let's see here. Um, Um, I'm not sure who you know who is, but okay. <laughs> yes, word collage is only in BES4. You did understand that correctly. Well, I'm glad that you bought your PE design because, for, so, because I like the program. Uh, you know, other people don't. Um, color separate in PE design and then it, divide by color and then convert to outline whole okay i have not done a video on how to make a velcro patch um not real sure what you're asking honestly you'll have to kind of shoot me an email on that one later and let me know a little bit more about how, what you're asking so if i were guys word collage is not that hard it's nice that it throws them all in there at one time in the other program in our BES program, but if you wanted to do word collage, you can come in here, turn off your stitches, put ever, whatever kind of stitch you want, oops, not that, whatever kind of stitch you want around the outside edge, and then come and type in your words. And you could actually duplicate words. Actually, oh, I've got an easier way to duplicate that. Hold on. Oh, undo. 
I didn't mean to get rid of them all. Let's say I want to duplicate that multiple times. I'm going to make it smaller. Arrange copy. Let's do um, matrix copy and give myself quite a few of these going across. So I got six of them now. I can come in, rotate it, put it where I want it to go. Shoot. Don't like that font, pick another font. Grab it, move it where you want it to go. Pick a font, any font. And then you can change your word. What have I got going on here? Sewing attributes. Ooh, pull compensation. Got a lot of pull compensation in there. And my density is quite high. Just go in there and pop them in there, okay? So, um, I mean, it's it's not that challenging. It's just not an automatic process. So, um, it can be done. It's just more of a manual process. Now, something that, that is kind of fun that we haven't done in a long time. You can also... do your name let's come here and go arrange copy and do circle copy and come and rotate and you can make yourself little names go in that direction and you could have done it the opposite way so if you wanted your name reading outside you can come in, shape, and the smaller you make your circle, the closer, oops, undo, hit the wrong button. Circle copy. The smaller you make your shape, the, clo the fewer words you get and the closer together they're going to be. But you can also change the direction to have them going inside and outside. There we go. You get a different look each and every time. So that's kind of fun. All right. Now, any other questions for me today? What did I, what's the easiest? Oh, uh, that one, mm, there's not a real easy way to do drop shadow and P design. Um, I, here's what I would do. Let's undo what I just did there. Let's see if we can think outside the box. Control and drag it down below. Oops. I hit the shift key instead. Now. Where's my. Okay, so now I've got two colors and I've got a kind of a drop shadow. Let me grab them both and let's see here if we can convert them to blocks. We did. Now we should be able to ungroup. Oh. Control Shift G will ungroup them for me. Now let's see if we can remove overlaps. There you go. Now you have a drop shadow text. Okay, so that is, uh, actually, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> you want me to do that again? 
easier than I thought it would be. Okay, so let's come in and grab our text. And let's pick a different font because I'm not I'm not crazy about that one. Let's pick something else. Let's do that one. All right. Control, move it up. Change the color. Now, if that's not how you want it shifted, you can use your nudge keys to get them where you want them to go. But I kind of like that. So select them all, text, convert to blocks. Let's see if I can remove outlines without doing anything. Modify overlap, remove overlap. Mm, yep. There you go. Oh, it did weird things that time. Wonder if that's because it was grouped. Let's undo that. Let me ungroup. Oh, huh. that's bizarre. I've never seen it do that, but there you go. Um, anyhow, I guess it depends on the font. It depends on whether it will do well. You were in a hurry and you were typing some specific size box. Type to select. Well, if you stayed within the recommended sizes and you changed to a fill pattern, that is probably what you didn't like is the fact that it did a, a fill pattern. So if you're in BES, um, <clears throat> um, and you're trying, to, and I don't know what specific size you're trying to stay in, but I mean, I'd have to see what you did to be able to understand what you're actually truly trying to do. But let's say I have the word Cindy in the Aurora font. I've got it. If I question it, it tells me my maximum size is 205. Now, just because I can go up to 205 doesn't necessarily mean, that, mean that's the best choice. Um, what is that in metric? Uh, 52 millimeters. So if I go up to 52 millimeters, There I am. Um, the only time I would change my fill, my item to a fill pattern is if I got that warning and I was dropping stitches or if when I went with my ruler and I, in metric, I held my ruler down and drew, drew from one side to the other and it was greater than seven, seven millimeters wide in any stitch, then I would change my stitch type. Otherwise, I would not do that. Okay, so if you look down at the bottom left hand corner, this is 6.7. 6 That's getting close to my max, but it's still within the boundaries of what I would do. So keep that in mind. You, the only time you want to change that fill pattern is when you exceed its size, because now it's telling me that something in here is larger than seven millimeters. Basically, it's saying it's larger than 10. And I can point out it's going to be from here to here. That's going to be larger. That's 10.4. And it's going to be here to here. That's going to be 10.3. And it's going to be here to here. You can find your wide stitches. That one's not too terribly wide. But this one didn't drop stitches. It would be at a point where things would pick out. So what I personally would do, instead of picking one of these cornrows or something, you might try smooth. And that might not, then click apply. That might not be so bad. but you could also overwrite your stitch length and change that stitch length to a longer length, say five millimeters. 
and then it won't do as many stitches. So even though if you change your stitch type to something else, you can always override your sti stitch length to where you can get longer stitches. Random would also be one that, mi that might work out a little bit better for you. When you pick something like cornrows, it, it's going to be, I, although I like the look of cornrows and I like, actually, which one is it that I like? I like, my favorite one is brick wall. But you can always override that stitch length. So if I take that back down to three millimeters, look up at the top right now, it's 16,591 stitches. Now it's 21,000 stitches. So it reduces that stitch count quite a bit. All right. All right, guys, I have gone over my time today. Um, so I think we are going to say goodbye for today. Lord have mercy, Patty. Can you tell me what all I've done today? And I'll go write it in a description. <laughs> wow. All right, guys, y'all have a great rest of your week. Um, I should be able to see you next Tuesday. If uh, next Tuesday also is my live with um, Brother So's. So I will be, I'm back on uh, where you've got education team back on, on Tuesdays. Next Tuesday is my live and we'll be doing custom fills on the luminaire. So next week you'll, that's what you'll get to see next week. So y'all have a good rest of your week. Thank you for joining me and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.